In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve an arithmetic sequence word problem. So again, arithmetic is a sequence where you're either adding or subtracting the same amount in every time interval or every number in the list or for every n. And so as you're reading a word problem, you have to clue into those important phrases that they determine that it is an arithmetic addition or subtraction problem. Here are some examples of those sorts of statements. You know, so if you're losing four pounds per week, that would be an arithmetic because it's always the same amount of four pounds. You can say that you're earning $11.50 per hour, so that's going to be automatic as well, always adding 11.5. Perhaps you have a baseball card collection and you're going to add 13 baseball cards per month, or maybe you're working outside in the summer and you're going to pick four weeds per day. So that quantity doesn't change no matter what N is, you're always adding or subtracting the same amount. And that's where this general formula comes from. T of N equals A plus D times N, where N is the number of terms. Or the, yeah, the term number, I guess. So A is still that term zero, and D is what we call the common difference. So what are you changing by every single time? So let's take a look at a couple examples, and so, or one example at least. So Zachary is saving to buy a new cell phone. His dad gave him $40 for his birthday, and he saves $28 a week from his job. Write the equation that represents Zachary's savings over time, and in how many weeks will Zachary have saved $750 to buy that new phone? So we need to look at this and say, well, we know that this is arithmetic because of the fact that this says he saves $28 each week from his job. So that's why we know that it is an arithmetic sequence. We also are given a piece of information about where he starts. So he was given $40 for his birthday, so that's apparently where we're starting this. So I like to make a table to help visualize what's going on with these values. So at month zero, or week zero rather, that means he has $40. And now he's saving $20 a week afterwards, so that means he'll have $68 at week one, and then at week two he will have $96 in the bank account. So that would be our general formula. We see that we are adding 28 every single time in order to get your next number in these pattern. So you're always adding 28. So for our rule, as we write T of N, we have our term zero where we start, which would be 40, because that's the $40 that his dad gave him. And then we're adding 28 for every N weeks. And that would be our formula. So he's saving those $28 each of those weeks. So the final question is, in how many weeks will Zachary have $750 that he can buy that phone? And so, again, $750, that is going to be the output that we're trying to solve for here. So that's the dollars. We have weeks as the input. Right? So we have $750, so we're not trying to plug in, we're trying to solve. And so we set this up and say 750 is going to equal 40 plus 28n. And now you solve this like you'd solve any other equation, where you subtract 40 on both sides. So you have 710 equals 28n. So as you take 710, so that is going to be what n equals, 710 over 28. And as you do that, you find that you have about 25.36 weeks. However, you know, that's not the answer that we can work with here when you have 25.36 because this is a sequence. These are the only numbers we have in here. We don't have any numbers in between. Apparently, he just puts those, 78, those $28, rather, a week into his account or into his envelope, whatever he's saving in, and nothing in between. So at 25 weeks isn't enough, so your final answer here would be 26 weeks because he needs to get to that 26th week before he has enough money to have $750.